So hello and welcome. I'm Frederick Dunn and this is The Way to Be. It's August in the state of Pennsylvania and I drove to the neighboring town, Harbor Creek, Pennsylvania, to the Garden Center, Stan's Garden Center. What do I want to see? Stuff like this. Perennials. That attract pollinators and specifically, I think you know, I want the ones that are attracting honeybees. That's a bumblebee right there. In fact, that looks like a carpenter bee covered in pollen. Look at these. The honeybees are all over them. So if you go to your garden center, how do you know which ones are going to be best for your bees? Well, you already know, probably, that these things are going to grow in your area. Look at this native bee, native pollinator. So if you're planning for pollinators overall, you can also look around to see what else is coming to the flowers, like this monarch butterfly. What do you think the flowers are that it's on right now? I'll bet it's a butterfly bush. Butterfly bushes don't necessarily work well for me in a higher elevation. This garden center is at 500 feet above sea level. That's a Miss Molly butterfly bush, but I'm at 1,300 feet above sea level, so I'm actually in ag zone colder than here. But I want to see what the honeybees are on, what they're getting. I want to see that they get nectar, and I want to see that they get pollen, but it goes beyond that. This is another butterfly bush, of course. This one's called Groovy Grape. They have a lot of interesting cultivar names. And it lets you know Ag Zone 9, for example, way too warm for where I live, so I don't want this. I want a perennial that's going to live for a long time. I want it to grow fairly large. I want it to do well in my cold area. But I want to check it out first and see which ones the honeybees are spending the most time on. Sure, honeybees can skip from flower to flower really quick. Okay, they're getting something from it. I want to watch them for a while and see... Uh, them spend a lot of time getting nectar which lets me know that there's a lot of nectar being produced by the plant and the helpers here were actually really nice people came up and started talking to me right out of the blue I didn't even have to ask for help I was just wandering around taking these pictures and videos butterfly magic butterfly bush this one comes with different color blooms on it so that's kind of fancy for your garden if you can't keep bees maybe keep flowers that are for the bees that sounds good. Look at this bee taking a rest. That again is a carpenter bee. I think she's worn out. She's just taking a break on this butterfly bush. These are honeybees and then of course a native bee zipping around with them. This is kind of a showy little flower here. But if you notice the bees are moving pretty quickly from blossom to blossom even though it does attract a lot of them. I don't know. You can hear my grandson in the background talking to one of the salespeople. He's full of information, of course. That uh, is a Millennium Ornamental Onion, of all things. Not for me, really. Although, another reason to be looking at these things at your garden center at the end of the year is you might get some breaks on price. Because, let's face it, these things are expensive. Pretty distinctive here. That is Agastachi. And if you notice, the honeybee is working its way across it. Look at the depth of the flowers. You want to make sure they can get in there. Blue boa agastachi, or agastachi, some people say. I don't even know what the real pronunciation should be. But you want to look at information like, look at that, zone 5 to 9. I'm in a zone 4, remember, so that's not going to work out for me. These are more of those onions again. I had never really paid attention to these before. I don't know how long they bloom because that's the other thing I'm interested in. Not only do they bloom and provide nectar and pollen for the bees, but how long is the bloom cycle? So I am going to arrive at a plant that I'm going to take home based on my observations and uh, we're going to talk a little bit about that one in this video that is only 11 minutes and 29 seconds long. So once again, it's just great. Support your garden center. The perennial grower came out and started talking with me. She has her preferences that she wanted to show me. So that's interesting too. We can learn a lot from the people that have worked for many years at the garden center. I'm the perennial grower. You're the perennial grower. So she wanted me to look at this sage. Now, based on the information here, zone 4, 8 to 9, and so on, it is a candidate for my property. I'm just not that attracted to it right now. I do have a lot of hyssop and other things growing on my property. 
And also I see bumblebees and things. I noticed that the honeybees that were visiting it were moving kind of quickly from flower to flower. Not necessarily getting a lot of nectar. And look how deep the flowers are. And then she wanted me to look at these right here. I don't know. They look kind of interesting. I did notice a lot of pollinators on them, but look at the shallow flowers and how quickly the bees move across the top of them. I don't think I was really interested in a plant called hotcakes. And uh, the other part of it was, of course, when we get down to finding out what zone it's good for. Look at this, zone 6 to 9 requires warmth that my property does not offer so, so much for hotcakes. This is what caught my eye. Looking around, you could hear the bees on this plant. What do you think it is? It's interesting too, but look at the pollen on their corbicula. It's actually almost pink colored. So what do you think the plant's called? Pinky Winky. I think that's kind of funny. It's obviously a cultivar, but it's a hydrangea. And everything was on it, including the fly there to the left, one of those shiny bottle flies. And look at the other one. So we look across here at hydrangeas and things like that. We don't want those. And uh, when we get to Pinky Winky, this hydrangea here, that's the one that got my attention because the flowers show up and they're tinged in pink, but it smelled so strong that it was bringing in bees from all over. Watch the one here on the end. It's really loaded. So I don't think it's fair to go to a garden center and spend all your time walking around making your YouTube video and getting pictures and talking about the different cultivars that are available in the hardiness zones and things like that. You probably should buy something, don't you think? So I'm going to buy two of these after I do a little wheeling and dealing, try to talk them down and get a better deal on the price. What do you think happened there? Look at the pollen there. I explained that I'm going to share about it. I even said I'm going to say this comes from Stan's Garden Center. Because that will make a big difference. And the price, of course, remained the same. But I bought them anyway. I got no price break. No military discount. But I bought two of them and I brought them home. Listen to the difference in environmental sounds here. How much nicer to live out in the county away from that town. Which, by the way, wasn't a very big town. But I bought two of them. Keeping in mind, Pinky Winky here, Pinnacle Hydrangea, has to be kept uh, in an area where I can keep an eye on it, because as it said, the deer go after it. Look, it's an award winner. I didn't even know that. I just went by what the bees were telling me. Six to eight feet tall, six to eight foot spacing. We're going to follow that. I'm going to put them in the ground. This is not really a gardening tutorial, although I will say I've had very good luck planting my own perennials and things like that. Deer resistance is low, and we have a lot of deer out here. So I'm going to have to figure out how to keep them off of this. I've been using a spray called Deer and Rabbit Repel. Super stinky stuff. It says it's adaptable to most well-drained soil. So that actually is suitable for where I'm going to put it. DVP Pinky. Whatever that is. Hydrangea paniculata. So it's good stuff. I did look it up later to try to find out if there's anything fancy about it. And I couldn't find much other than cycled back to the same listings and the same descriptions over and over. So I'm going to plant it. Of course, I look at the depth of the plant soil inside the pot, not the pot itself. And I'm going to plant it right level with the top of the dirt inside the pot. So I dug it out twice the diameter of the pot. That's pretty standard. And of course, we have to chop up the roots. It was pretty root bound. I forgot to ask them how long have these been in these pots, but it really doesn't matter. The roots look like they're in good shape and we have good soil for them to expand into. So I leveled it up, arranged it where I want. I'm going to put some dirt in it. And of course, the chickens show up and they have to inspect everything that I'm doing. And I didn't mind because I did unearth a grub or two and uh, they just want to eat them. They want to see if uh, the place where I'm putting these plants is going to be suitable for them. I'm not that worried about them digging it up. These are free-range birds, barred Plymouth rocks, and buff Orpingtons right there. And then, of course, after it was half full of dirt, I watered it in. Then I'm going to top it off with dirt and water it in again. And here's the good news. I'm in concert with what the weather's supposed to do, because for the next three days, starting with tomorrow, these things are going to get rained on. So that's good news, too. 
So you might wonder what the other flowers are around it. Those are cosmos. So we got the first one in. We're going to put in the second one. There it is, just like magic. Same planting procedure. And this was yesterday. So at the time of making this video, August the 15th, everything is doing great. We have warm weather and rain ahead, and it's with the cosmos. And I can see it from the house. So if we need to yell at some deer, we can do it. Look what's going on. The honeybees are all over it, just like clockwork. Now, is this going to make a big difference in the honey flow on my property? Probably not, because we don't have thousands of them or hundreds of them. We just have these two big plants, but they're showy. And guess what? If you're into photography, look at what a great composition this offers. A bright white pink tinged background for pictures of your honeybees in flight or sitting still. And it smells great and it's suitable for slow motion video. You can see the bee sticking out her tongue. She's hovering around. She gives her approval by what? By visiting the flowers, getting nectar, and rubbing pollen on her hind legs, which is what she's doing right now. How much more of an endorsement do you need? Go to your local garden center, see what's growing, see what bees are on the plants there, and it'll help you make a choice with what's going to work best where you live. USDA zone three to eight, six to eight feet tall, six to eight foot spacing, adaptable to most well-drained soil. And it's gonna work out great. Thanks for watching. I hope this video was helpful.